Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to report statistics collected during a simulation. To get started, in the 3D world I have a layout open, which you can find a link to in the video description. So open that layout, and if I run the simulation, you can see the feeders create boxes and cylinders which are transferred onto these conveyors. So using statistics, we can know how many parts enter these conveyors and how many parts exit the conveyors. To do that, I'll reset the simulation, and whenever you want to report statistics, go to the statistics group here, and click this button. This opens the statistics dashboard, and notice the dashboard can have one or more tabs, and each tab contains its own set of charts which are laid out in a grid. If you want to change the layout, use this drop down menu here to select a different template. So I can choose this template, this template, well let's actually go back to the first template. There we go. Now if you want to insert a new chart or edit a chart, just select its tile or grid. So I'll select P1 here, and there's no chart here right now. So I can go to the toolbar, and I can add a new line chart, a new area chart, a bar chart, or a pie chart. I also have the option of using the templates drop down menu here to automatically create a chart for a selected component in the 3D world. But let's keep things simple. So I have P1 selected here. I'll then add a new line chart. And notice the chart is now here, but there's no reported data. So let's go to the Properties panel, and you can see the properties of this chart. So let's give it a name or title, and I'll call it Example. And if you want to show this name in the chart, just select the Title Visibility checkbox here. And yep, there's the chart title. Now, when you're working with a new chart, you probably want to maximize its view in the dashboard. So click this button here to expand the chart. Whoop, there you go. And a couple things to notice here, we have one axis showing a value and another axis showing time. So the data of this chart will be updated during a simulation. Now the data that's reported by this chart is defined using data series, which you can see here. Now this concept is very similar to Excel. What you're doing is you're selecting the components in the 3D world and then reporting the value of a property selected here. So let's do that now. Move my dashboard out of the way. And let's now select the components. So I will expand the components property here click the plus sign, and if you know the names of the components, you could add them from this list, but another way to do this is to click the pick icon here, and then pick the node of the component you want to add to that data series. So let's select this first conveyor here, and notice it's now added to the list. Let's do the same for the other conveyors, so this middle conveyor, and this last conveyor here. There we go. Now for this data series, we want to report how many parts entered the, the pass of these conveyors. So let's actually give this data series a name call it parts entered and now let's choose the property so you can select a property in a component for example the value of a signal or a joint value but in some cases you know a component will have a statistics behavior that collects a lot of information for you so notice right here I have a statistics behavior and its property is called parts entered so this counts how many parts enter the path of each conveyor so this is a shared property but if you added a component that doesn't have this property you know, of course its value will probably be none or zero, so it's usually best to add a new data series for components that have different properties that you want to report. So now we have to choose how often we want to update or report the value of this property. Now whenever you're using a statistics behavior, it uses the global sampling interval that's in your dashboard. So if I go here to the dashboard, you can see you have an interval, and by default it's 60 seconds, so every 60 seconds the data of charts will be updated. Now if you go to the properties panel you can see that each chart has its own sampling interval so it can define on its own how often it wants to update its data. But if you're using a statistics behavior by default it's going to use that global sampling interval and that's why it has a negative one value here. Now if you were to choose a different property you can still use negative one to use the global sampling interval here. So let's actually change this to be one second and what that means is that every one second the data of this chart will be updated. And let's see how that works now. Let's actually dock our dashboard to the left of the 3D world and unpin those panels here, give us some more room. There we go. And let's unpin the properties panel too. And make our dashboard just a bit bigger. So we're going to check how many parts enter these conveyors. So if I run the simulation, we can see some things are already happening in our chart. Whoa. And notice that now a box has entered this middle conveyor here and the lines are now updated. So let's see, we don't really know what components though these lines are for, so 
with the chart selected here, I'll go back to the properties panel and I'll select the legend visibility checkbox. So you can edit a chart while the simulation is running or stopped. And notice in our dashboard, we can see, yep, the red line is for conveyor three, the green line is for conveyor five, and the blue line is for conveyor four. Now, if you want to change this order, just go back to your data series and you'll have these arrows here. So let's actually move conveyor four up. There we go. And it's updated in the chart. Let's stop the simulation and inspect our data. So we have a one minute mark here. So if I point at a line, you can see I can get the value. So a conveyor five at one minute. So far, two parts have entered that conveyor. If I now go up, 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 we can see that at about a little bit past one minute and 10 seconds, four parts have entered conveyor number four. Now this might be hard to see, so let's go ahead and zoom in on our chart. Just use your mouse scroll wheel and rotate it forward to zoom in. And we can now see, notice the scale of our time axis is accompanying us. So let's now look at here. So at about one minute, 11 seconds, we can see that three parts have entered conveyor five. Let's actually zoom out. And if you want to zoom in on a specific time period, you can hold down the left mouse button. Notice you can now select that time period. So let's slice from the beginning to this point right here. So it's about 50 seconds to one minute and 30 seconds. There we go. So now it's zoomed in here. And we can see at one minute, 15 seconds, that conveyor number four had four parts so far have entered that conveyor. Great. Let's now zoom back out. And notice what happens when we reset the simulation. Oh, 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 all the data is still here. So even if you stop the simulation or reset it, you know, you still have access to this data. But of course, if you were to start the simulation again, you know, this data would be, you know, lost because time would reset back to zero. Now, if you want to export this information, go to the toolbar and you can click the print chart button here. So this allows you to print a chart. And here's the preview. Ooh, very nice. Let's go back and you have other options too. You can export this information to Excel or to a CSV file. And like I said before, if I was to run the simulation again, notice that the chart updates and it's now using new data based on the time. Let's go ahead and stop the simulation. And we're knowing how many parts have entered the conveyors, but we want to know also how many parts leave the conveyors. So with the chart selected, I'll go back to the properties panel and we need to use a new data series. So I'll go here and click add series. And let's give this a new name called parts exited and let's now add our components so we'll pick them that conveyor there let's actually pin the properties panel while we're doing this this middle conveyor again and this other conveyor and let's move conveyor four up there we go this time let's use another statistics property called parts exited which you can see here and notice that when you're working with one data series you may want to collapse another one so you can just click this button here to collapse the parts entered data series and notice in our chart, we now get that legend showing those conveyors and that specific data series. So let's reset, run the simulation again, and speed it up super fast. And we're getting a lot of information. So let's actually see how this looks. It's kind of a step function. So that cyclic route or routing rule of the shuttle conveyor, you know, it's kind of keeping things even. So it's going from one conveyor to the next conveyor and they're kind of just increasing, increasing over time. So let's stop our simulation and inspect here at about, let's actually go to one minute. So at one minute, we can see that with the yellow line, conveyor five, two parts have exited that conveyor. So if we zoom in again, we can just click right here and see it for different conveyors as well. So at conveyor five, almost past one minute, you know, three parts have entered it. Now, there's a lot of data here, so I may want to change the chart type. So let's go ahead and go to our properties panel. And notice you can change the type of the chart, you know, with the simulation stopped or running. So let's actually change it to be an pie chart. And ho oh, ho, we can see, there we go. So let's start the simulation again. And the data just continues to be updated. So we can see that about 17 to 18% of parts have entered conveyor three. And you can see the total right there, seven parts so far have entered conveyor three. And the blue line, or this blue wedge here, let's actually click it to expand it, or no, separate it. You can see that parts that have exited conveyor four, right now it's 16% of all reported data for this chart, and 10 items so far have exited conveyor four. 
Now, in some cases, you may want to use interval data, because right now we're using cumulative data. So it's being updated and added to a total. Let's reset. And for our data series, for our chart, let's expand parts entered and change our statistics property to be parts interval entered. So instead of getting the total amount that parts have entered to the conveyor, we're just going to get the total amount for a specific interval. So for each recorded interval, how many parts have entered these conveyors. So let's do the same for our parts exited. Let's use parts interval exited. And let's change our interval to be 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds we'll know how many parts have entered the conveyors and how many parts have exited the conveyors. So let's run our simulation. And we don't have any data. Will, what's going on? Why is there no data? That's because we haven't reached the first interval. So once the simulation reaches 60 seconds, we'll see something happen. And boom, there we go. So let's stop the simulation here. So I'm at a minute 20 seconds. And we can see the first recorded interval, about 15% of the parts entered conveyor 3. And during that interval, only two parts entered conveyor 3. And this big chunk here, about 23%, of parts entered conveyor 4 for a total of 3. So now, if I was to run the simulation, the next recorded interval will be at 2 minutes. So let's go. And this is going to be a 60 second interval. So for the next 60 seconds, we'll see an update. There we go. So let's stop right there. And notice that the green section has now changed. You know, before it was 23%, but now it's 16%. And 3 parts entered conveyor 4 during that interval. So, you know, our simulation is kind of evened out right now. All right, let's reset our simulation. And this concludes the video. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.